Reverse sear has been one of my go-to methods. Picanha has been one of my go-to steaks. I want to introduce you to a very unique, fun recipe. We're going to do a reverse sear picanha skewer. Okay. Let's get into the action. We're up to temp at 350 degrees. Let's check out the grill setup. Notice how I've got a deflector shield right below a grill grate or ready to rock semi-indirect. That is my favorite setup for doing a roasted picanha. I talked about reverse sear. Uh, look at this gorgeous cut of beef today. We've got a certified Angus, certified Angus beef picanha, uh, and that's the that's the sirloin cap. That fat, my goodness. Yeah, the, you know you you think about trimming that off, but a lot of genetics and thought and care went into building that fat cap and the intermuscular fat. Okay. Uh, now a lot of times we'll see this roasted as whole right okay and this is called the picanha now if we cut right now with the grain and best way to do that is to kind of look down here and notice how we've got grain structure can you see that oh yeah grain structure running running that way we're going to cut this with the grain so that once we slice it we can cut across the grain um, but i'm going to cut this into culotte steaks so it went from the sirloin cap, AKA picanha, to cutting it into individual steaks, which is the culotte steak. Uh, and we're gonna eventually skewer this once it's been smoked low and slow, but I want more surface area, and that's the point. And again, the reason that I slice this up right now is because I, I just had this, now I've got this, 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 I've got, I've got more sides, okay? Another thing we can do is put a little scruff to it, just with a sharp knife, drawing across, especially for that fat cap, because no smoke or seasoning can get through that. So we're gonna scruff this to increase surface area, to increase uh, seasoning, and increase uh, smoke adherent. And we're gonna have a much better product here. Let's get it seasoned up. Today I've chosen Elaine's Barbecue SPG. Again, it's salt, pepper, garlic, so simple stuff on great beef makes sense. And we're seasoning above so it can rain down evenly. Go generous on that fat cap. We really wanna get that, that goodness in there, start the osmosis process. Good, good, good. Um, first ingredient, natural lump charcoal. Semi-indirect, meaning I'm only using one deflector shield here. That way all that heat is rolling over. Uh, I've chosen hickory today for smoking wood, but because we don't have a lot of meat here, and I'm not gonna use any oil, we're just gonna go fat cap down first. Of course, it's not gonna wanna stand up for me. That's okay, that's okay. The leaning technique. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we're on there. And now let's get in here so everybody can see there's glowing embers. That's where you want to put your non-soaked wood chunk right in there. Maybe we grab some tongs so we can do a little best practices here. And you're going to look at that it's starting to it catch fire. Already. Yeah. And that's what you want. You want to see combustion, right? That's why we don't soak our, our wood chips or wood chunks because then we're just getting moisture loss. That's the good smoke. You can't even see smoke right now, but I can smell it. It's stinging my eyes. There's acid in there. That's what we want to smoke with. Our culotte steak or our picanha or our sirloin cap is on the grill, fat cap side down, 350 degrees, semi-indirect. Good, clean, translucent smoke going. Let's close that dome. Culotte steaks are go for smoke right now. Let's do a quick, I don't know, marinade or basting uh, deal here. So just some big bold flavors that will caramelize on the outside. Uh, let's start with some Coslix mustard. This stuff's the real deal. Uh, next, let's go in with a little red wine vinegar. Worcestershire sauce. Obviously. I you can't spell it. I can't spell it. You know, somebody will say Worcester because it's from Worcester. Well, I, I never grew up pronouncing it that way. <laughs> bit of soy sauce. Use less sodium if you want. A little bit of lemon juice. Let's scoot you over. And again, all these quantities and ingredients will be written down in the recipe below. So you'll have all these. Uh, and I find the lemon juice on steak brightens everything up just like it does on everything else, but it's wonderful. And a little black pepper. Now, Nathan was kind enough to blitz this up. What'd you use, a little food processor? A little uh, spice grinder. Spice grinder. And then we've got fresh cracked pepper. 
And when you're using fresh cracked pepper, it's a beautiful thing. When you use that other stuff, you might as well be using pencil shavings. All right, so I want us to start thinking about it that way. Uh, let's go in with a little bit of oil. And these are just big flavors, everything, right? The mustard, the, the fresh cracked black pepper. Uh, the only thing we're missing in my mind right now, and if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know, I'm a garlic guy, okay? Big, bold garlic. And garlic and mustard are just amazing. And with that, we have got a nice little paint or baste for that. Uh, you could put some, I think honey would be too much in there, you know. It's acidic, it's bright, uh, it's garlicky. We'll get a spoon and just kind of bathe as it's uh, uh, searing when it's skewered up, okay. And that's the whole thing with this recipe, right. We're slow, well, let's look at it, come on. We're slow smoking. Well, and look look here, you're even starting to get a little bubble, seeing that sunlight. And so at this low rate, we're doing a different kind of caramelization than we'll do at the fast rate, meaning there's gonna be two types of Maillard reaction that occur here. One right now during this semi-indirect low and slow, and that's the kind of Maillard reaction that you think of. And when I talk about Maillard reaction, the caramelization that's occurring. That smoke is bathing it. We're getting caramelization, but it's more of like a roasting coffee effect or a baking bread effect versus the caramelization that occurs when we blister sear it after it's been cut and skewered with the vegetables and the lacquer going on there. We're winning. I'm getting way too in my head about this, but we're winning. So I just flipped it to one side. We're gonna try to flip to all four sides and just get even smoke caramelization, low sear. Uh, let's start working on our vegetables a little bit. You know, when deciding how large to cut this, what you don't wanna do is cut it too small, right? So let's start by cutting it directly in half. And now we can say, this is a relatively good size onion. I think we can get, what do you think, Nathan? We get quarters there? Sure. Again, these are going on the skewers. You, you don't want them too small that they don't skewer right or they don't touch the grates, but you don't want them too big that you're just eating raw onion. Nobody, nobody wants that. Uh, I got tricolor here just because it seemed like the thing to do, you know. <laughs> um, I, you know, a little, little, uh, little color contrast or diversity on that plate is going to help it. Look at that. That's just wanting to fall apart for us. I'm going to scoop out some of those seeds. Take that out as a hole right there. Get rid of that. And then again, same kind of size deal. So we can even do this with our hands, right? Maybe, maybe we cut. Maybe we cut here. If you want to throw mushrooms in there, you can. I think I've got some inside, but I think this is this is going to be good for us. Let's go ahead and flip that steak one more time. I mean, these are going to be good enough just to eat by themselves as is. Look, this is a side that hasn't even seen the heat yet, right? So we haven't even gotten any real uh, great caramelization. It's just getting smoke and such. Now I'm going to use my ash tool here and begin to rake the charcoal pile over to this open side. And why I'm doing that is because I'm going to install this grill grate on the lower portion of the divide and conquer system. And this is where it's like a culinary jungle gym. You know, you, you, you've got up high for uh, smoking semi-indirect. Now we've got a grill grate here for big, bold searing over direct heat, which is what we want for our, our caramelization second part of this cook. Uh, probably another 10 minutes domed down, and then we'll start cutting that up and building our skewers. Still stabilized at that 350 degrees. Nice clear smoke coming through. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. Wow. And we are at that 100 degree Fahrenheit, at least on this thinner slice. I, you know, I didn't do the best job of, of cutting them uh, exactly the same, but look at that color. Look at that smoke on the outside. Look at that red, that's what we're looking for. Fat cat began to render. Uh, we'll let that rest a little bit. While this is resting, I wanna raise the temperature of that 350 degree grill to at least 500 degrees. So we've slid open the draft door. Uh, we can leave the dome open or we can shut it, swivel all the way open, and we're gonna watch that needle begin to climb. So now we build our skewers. So this, you know, what makes this method unique 
is it is the reverse sear, right? We just got all the benefit of low and slow smoking on the outside of the larger cut of beef there. Now we're gonna cut it into smaller pieces. It's not done cooking all the way. We cooked it to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's below the rare temperature, right? Uh, so we will go ahead and slice it into chunks or cubes, skewer it with our vegetables, put a little lacquer on there and begin to sear it as if it were just finishing the reverse sear and finishing the vegetables. And it's gonna be a very unique beef skewer. I'm super excited about this one. And for this last skewer, looks like I've outplayed my coverage a little yeah. bit, meat to vegetable. So we're going all meat on this one. You know, why Why not? Tell me in the comment section below, which one of these skewers are you going for? The vegetable and meat or the all meat? I, I, I like them both. I mean, I'm, I'm all about it. Uh, look at this board sauce that we have. We're going to go ahead and toss all of these in the board sauce oh, yeah. a little bit. A little more SPG since we've got those vegetables and those newly revealed sides. You can even put it in the board sauce if you want. And That's then, a fun trick. Yeah, and then roll it around. Okay, all good things there. Fun. And look at that. Dang. Uh, our grill is cruising. All right, that big Joe where we opened up the draft door and airflow. Now we're at about 750 Fahrenheit. About. <laughs> no big deal, you know, no big deal. Uh, check it out. And I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna uh, oil the grill grates or anything, okay? What I'm gonna make sure I have is a, a pair of tongs that are pretty long. This is as short as you want in that kind of temperature. And the, I guess to give you another hint, you wanna put these things down so that you can work your hand around the grill without putting it over, right? Uh, especially if you don't have chef hands, you're not ready to go right over that heat. You don't have to, okay? Just make it so you can work around. Now we're gonna take our skewers. And this is grill up, okay? Go dome up, rather. Um, you just want to take a little bit of that lacquer and go right over the top. Same thing with this one. It's going to help put a little liquid on those vegetables, too, to uh, conduct more heat and soften them up. It's going to bring some flames to the table, that oil. Oh, yeah. This is great. And then we're going to flip in about, I don't know, I'd say I'd say 45 seconds per side or so. Remember, the meat's almost there. We're going to add lacquer every once in a while just to build up that caramelization. Take a look. You don't have to just leave it there either. You can be an active participant. If you're like, oh, that's as much as I want to get this meat skewer done because I want this medium rare, but I want these to be a little more done, watch this trick put the vegetables together and then stack this one on top oh yeah yeah culinary jungle gym beautiful stuff then you can close that down if you want to capture a little smoke i think we've got plenty though these vegetables are feeling nice and soft i think we're now ready to grab our presentation plate gonna need a bigger boat yeah and right on top oh wow and that is fabulous Simple things done perfectly win every time. And right now I'm holding it up like this and that fat cap is just basting oh, down God. textures, flavors, technique. Remember, a recipe is just a guideline. We use things like reverse searing, simple smoke, semi-indirect, right? We pay attention to those things. Sky is the limit. That's fabulous. That was, that was absolutely fabulous fabulous uh, and you can imagine sliding all this off onto possibly you know some steamed rice or something like that or just go skewer go go yeah, full skewer yeah yeah uh, no but it's fabulous okay and again simple techniques will take you all the way there but start layering these techniques that that you know and the char that natural lump charcoal is your secret ingredient I absolutely love it folks if you enjoyed this recipe video as much as we enjoy creating it for you don't forget to do all the things subscribe like do leave us a comment we love reading those and as always from our backyard to yours cheers and happy grilling